Well, speaking of campaigns, a lot of speculation. An election could be called as early as next month. Let's just say it will be called next month, I think it's safe to say. So the question is, though, is what has all of this infighting done to the Green Party support? Well, Eric Grenier is the author and publisher of the writ.ca. He also runs the CBC News poll tracker, and he joins us now. Eric, great to talk to you. So w let's start with the numbers. W where does the party stand now compared to before all this chaos started? Yeah, their numbers in the polls have been going down uh, over the last few weeks. And if we compare it to where it was just before uh, Janica Atwin crossed the floor from the Greens to the Liberals uh, back in June, that we've seen that the Greens have dropped. They're now uh, polling at about 5% in the uh, CBC's poll tracker. So they are down about a point from where they were uh, a month ago nationally. Now, that isn't a huge drop, but when you see it consistently, across multiple polls, then you start to see that it is uh, something that's a, a bit more important, a bit more significant. You can see also in British Columbia and Atlantic Canada, the two places where they won seats in the last election, their numbers have also dropped. Just in the last week, we saw a poll by the Angus Reid Institute that had the Green Party at 3% and a poll by Leger that had them at 4%. For both the Angus Reid Institute and Leger, that's the lowest they've ever had the Greens since Annemie Paul became leader. So we are seeing that there has been an impact on Green Party support, and it does potentially put uh, one, maybe two of their seats uh, that they won in the last election uh, at risk and makes it a lot harder for the Greens to uh, think about making the gains that they had been hoping to make uh, earlier on before all of this exploded. Yeah, the BC numbers in particular would, would really be problematic in terms of potential growth of them. But what about Annamie Paul's own personal popularity? We know she's deeply unpopular with some factions in her party. What about with the broader electorate? It does seem to be having an impact on her personally, not just on the par party. And the Nanos Research poll, uh, they do a poll every week uh, that rolls into that, that poll four weeks of, of uh, surveys over the preceding month. She's only now seen as the best person to be prime minister by 1% of Canadians. She was almost at 5% a little over a week ago, a month ago. So we are seeing that kind of shift. That is a statistically significant shift. But also the Angus Reid Institute found that her personal numbers are also getting a lot worse. The number of Canadians who have a favorable view of Annamie Paul dropped by four points to just 29% in their most recent poll. But more importantly, their unfavorables increased by 11 points. Uh, to uh, 42 percent. So that is not very good for enemy Paul, that her own personal numbers are also taking a hit. So a lot of Canadians looking at the situation are not only saying this looks like a party that's in disarray, but is also wondering about what this means about enemy Paul's own leadership. Yeah, it's a terrible cocktail uh, of ingredients uh, going into an election, Eric. I, I just, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I, I don't know if you can think of even one historic precedent, because I certainly can't off the top of my head. Yeah, we've seen sometimes where leaders step down when they see the, uh, you know, the how things are unfolding and they just do it for the good, for yeah, their right. own sake to get out of the way. But to see a, an own party uh, really kneecapping their leader and really not trying to make this an internal fight, which is what usually happens when you see these leadership races, this is very public, very ugly, and it's not helping the Greens. All right, Eric, always good to talk to you, man. That's Eric Grenier, the author and publisher of the writ.ca, and he also does the CBC poll tracker. Thanks, man. Thanks. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.